Hello, everyone. And uh, good evening. Uh, let us continue our journey. And the course is the introduction to balinology and it is petroleum application with uh, Mr. Alessandro. Uh, welcome, Mr. Alessandro. And uh, let us start our lecture today. Okay, good, good evening, all, and uh, welcome in this third uh, session in uh, this short course of uh, introduction to palynology and uh, its petroleum application. And uh, in this classroom, we are going to see the classification of the palynomorphs and, uh, and their principal uh, characteristics. And uh, as I told you before, <coughs> in the second lesson, uh, in the second lesson, we saw uh, all the classification of the organic matter and uh, how the, the kerogen component was, uh, was classified and studied. And uh, mainly in, the, in this lesson, we are going to see all the palynomorphs that derive principally from marine and the terrestrial environment. And uh, we are going to see uh, the characteristics of uh, well, the principal characteristics that uh, are used for study and investigate the different specimens of each group. And um, uh, if, we, if we consider uh, the palynomorph, what is a palynomorph? Uh, in the geological term, a palynomorph is a particle that is derived from a, a, a system organism uh, of a, that can have a size uh, between uh, 50, 25, 10 microns and 500 micrometers. And uh, uh, palynomorphs uh, such as uh, kerogen uh, are found uh, in sedimentary rocks and they fossilize uh, through the time of, uh, the, uh, of the geological time history. And uh, if we consider the palynomorphs, the palynomorphs can derive principally from two environments, the marine environment. From the marine environment, that belongs uh, principally uh, the Principally, the palynomorphs that uh, live in uh, in the sea, and uh, we we are going to see also the the terrestrial palynomorphs that are classified. Uh, from, well, uh, the terrestrial palynomorphs principally belong from the terrestrial plants and fungi, and uh, and uh, so they fossilize in the form of spore and pollen and fungi spores. In, in the term of, 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 marine, of marine palynomorphs, uh, they, they fossilize in, uh, in, in form of acritars, cytinosons, uh, dinoflagellite, and colecodons. Okay. Um, when, uh, when we are talking about palynomorphs, uh, palynomorphs are, are, are very important because each group of, 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 the palyn of palynomorphs uh, range differently uh, inside the, the inside the, the stratigraphic uh, um, time scale. Um, so uh, here we can see a picture where are uh, represent uh, different line, lines, and uh, each line uh, is uh, represents a group of uh, palynomorphs and uh, represents uh, in a, in a, in a chronostratigraphic chrono point of view uh, its distribution inside the, the time history. And uh, as we can see, for example, acritars and cytinodons are uh, fossils or are palynomorphs that, that uh, lived only in the Paleozoic. So they, for example, in the petroleum uh, investigation, in the palynological investigation, actually in the petroleum uh, uh, industry, uh, you, are, you, you will work or you will expect to work with acritars and cytinodons, for example, in Saudi Arabia or North Africa where the principal reservoirs of oil are, uh, are yielded in, uh, in Paleozoic rock. And uh, uh, there exist uh, this, uh, also uh, other palynomorphs like dinoflagellites and uh, angiosperm uh, pollen grains that, for example, appear uh, in the Mesozoic. So, uh, for example, if you, if you are working in, uh, in, uh, in uh, I don't know, uh, in Mexico, where the reservoirs are located uh, mainly in, uh, in Mesozoic rocks in southern Gulf of Mexico, uh, you will uh, you 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 will expect to work mainly with you know and spore and pollen, 
and uh, you will not expect to find the uh, and acritas in that rock. So um, we, as a, well, uh, now we can start with the classification of all the palinomorphs. And uh, let's start with, uh, the, with acritas. Uh, acritas, uh, such as, as uh, I told you before, uh, they are uh, uh, a group that uh, belongs mainly from the Paleozoic period. And uh, uh, what are architects? Architects are, uh, are organic wallet or eukaryotic only cells. Uh, and uh, their, their biological affinity is principally unknown. Uh, the most accepted theory uh, is that uh, they are uh, similar to the nocturnal life and are cheese of uh, are resisting cheese of uh, marine phytoplankton algae. They, they range from the Precambrian to the Tourette, and the uh, acritals are uh, extremely valuable for the investigation of uh, the biostratigraphy in Paleozoic rocks and are very useful, uh, principally in a, for paleoenvironmental reconstruction. Um, if, if, well, uh, acritals are generally described. Uh, such as uh, a, a particle that uh, is mainly structured by a vesicle uh, that uh, can project uh, signs and uh, process and press. Uh, their taxonomy is, uh, is defined principally by their, their ornamentation, the presence of process, and uh, the shape of the, the vesicle. And uh, the principal group of architects are uh, generally are. Uh, are uh, are described and classified by their morphology. Uh, they can be, well, here we can see the, all the, the classification. For example, the group of acanthomorphs uh, has a spherical shape with signs. The metaphors principally uh, yield signs. Polygonomorphs uh, uh, principally have a triangular or square shape defined by spines. And all there are uh, other or a morphology like spiromorphs, homomorphs that are that yield principally a spherical shape, uh, like uh, pseudomorphs and the hercomorphs. And uh, there are also uh, other architects that 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 have, um, for example, uh, polygonal shapes. And uh, for example, these kind of shapes are classified as prismatoforms. Uh, in, the, in the next slide, I, uh, I will show you that the, 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 the classification of the, the different group of acritars uh, realized by the, their principal morphology can, 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 create, can, can, uh, can be able to create uh, this kind of scheme where uh, we can see that uh, for different age, the different groups uh, characterized by different shapes range from different, uh, different periods. So we can see that the different shapes are uh, range, uh, range differently uh, inside the, 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 the stratigraphic range, range scale. And uh, here I put to you some examples so you can visualize what is an acritar. And uh, as we can see in the first, as, uh, as, as we, as we see in the first lesson, I put you a transmitted like uh, photography and the uh, and, and electron uh, and the electron and the scanning electron microscope photography. And, uh, this is an example of, of a pteromorph. Uh, a pteromorph is uh, characterized for uh, an egg shape with uh, protuberance in the central part of the body. Uh, here there is another example of uh, on a cantromorph. This is a homosphoridium molecum from Estonia. It is uh, from the Cambria. Uh, this specimen, and uh, as we can see, is characterized by a temporal body that yields uh, several uh, elongated and uh, fine spines uh, all over the body. And uh, here there is the, the representation. We can see the specimen in, the, in a three-dimensional point of view. And so we can see all the characteristics of, of, this, of the acritals. Here uh, we can see another example of a polygonomorph. Uh, polygonomorph <coughs> is uh, the previous one as a, a central body with uh, processes in this case. And uh, here there is a, 
other, other examples of aquitars that yield different shapes, different kinds of processes. And uh, these aquitars belong uh, from, uh, from North Africa, belong from, uh, from the Ordovician Silurian Age, uh, in the, and belong from uh, Tunisia. We are located in Northern Gondwana in uh, North Africa. The other group of or the other group of palinomorphs that are studied uh, also in uh, for uh, for biostratigraphical purposes, at least in the in the in the exploration of hydrocarbons, are kitinodonts. Kitinodonts um, with acritars uh, belong principally from uh, from the marine environment and uh, are, are organic called uh, the marine microfossil uh, that are produced by an unknown uh, an organism. Um, they have, uh, well, several different affinities were be proposed uh, and uh, the, the most accepted theory is that uh, this kind of uh, fossil uh, represents uh, an egg or a juvenile, or or a juvenile stage of a marine animal. And, and the actual, the, the composition of the kitinozoans, uh, like their affinity, uh, remains unknown, um, actually. So, um, uh, um, Silurian uh, range from the Ordovician, from the, the Ordovician, to, to the end of the Devonian is a group that, that only exists in the Paleozoic. Uh, are abundant in, in, uh, in the most all of, well, are abundant in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, uh, in almost the marine sediments uh, across all the globe. And uh, their, uh, their, their, their wide distribution, their rapid evolution, and uh, their uh, and uh, they and uh, their location in the in around the globe uh, make them valuably they make them valuably uh, for uh, for the stratigraphic markers. Here there is there is a picture uh, picked from Paris uh, 2006, and uh, we can see uh, with the with we can see with the with the round point. Uh, uh, the Ordovician distribution of the Kitinodonts around all the globe, with the triangle, the Silurian distribution of the Kitinodonts around all the globe, and with the star, uh, the distribution of all the Devonian Kitinodonts around the globe. And as we can see in this picture, we can see that the, <coughs> the, the Kitinodonts uh, are, well, they, they are distributed, well distributed around the globe. And so uh, this uh, allows to, to be stratigraphically correlated. And so uh, this uh, allows to, to the ability to create a global pure donation to be isolated in the, the, the stratigraphic studies of the uh, the, in the In this slide, we can see the principal structure, the principal morphological structures uh, that uh, yield the, the Kitinozons. Uh, a kitinodont is principal a small vesicle uh, that uh, have uh, that have uh, a shape of a bottle of ever of of a vase. Uh, he uh, this this particle yield in a uh, well always yield yield an aperture on the top, and uh, uh, this aperture is called the operculum. And generally, in the basal part of the particle yield uh, ornamentation. Uh, that uh, that can be processes or spines, and uh, here we can see, for example, the different terms that are used for for the description of the of the morphology of the phenomenon. And uh, generally, the, the, this kind of particle, uh, this kind of fossil, is bigger is bigger than other kind of microfossil, and they can range from five to two thousand microns. Um, the, the, the taxonomy of Kitinodon is generally well studied. So, exist um, biozonation and uh, all the genera, well, no, exist a very good classification for the genera of the, that describes the, the, the Kitinodon. And uh, 55, 56 genera uh, are accepted 
and use it in the description of, uh, of the peanut zone. And um, the generic assignment is, uh, is based uh, by the, uh, by the ar arrangement, the location, and the, the shape of the morphology of the particles. And also the, the outline of the, the, vest the vesicle is used for, for the classification of the genera and, uh, and, and then of the species. Here we can see the, the principal uh, structures and the, 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 well, the principal ornamentation that can, that can yield the particle, that, that can yield the pitinozone surface. And we can see here the principal shape champ shape chamber that, uh, that, that can uh, characterize a pitino or so on. So these two, these, these features uh, are the principal features, uh, features uh, used for the, for the description and the, the identification uh, of the different genera and the different species of pitino zones. And uh, a, a particularity of pitino zones and, and is that they can uh, create a chain like structures and um, generally they are found uh, as an isolated fossil like this. They are uh, alone isolated, but uh, sometimes uh, you, can found, you can find uh, uh, specimens uh, of CT nodes attached together. Um, uh, sometimes, um, well, um, if, well uh, they are found they, they are found that basket, but uh, um, does not mean that uh, that that this kind of pitinodrant or this kind of species uh, has a, a colonial behavior and uh, it, this is a particularity that uh, uh, that characterizes this kind of palinomorph and uh, uh, we can see here two pictures one in transmitted light and one uh, SIM picture of uh, species of, of Amarga Kitina elegans. And here we can see, uh, for example, a specimen, as I told you before, uh, this kind of palinomorph uh, has a wide uh, stratigraphic distribution and existed only uh, in, in the Paleozoic, in the uh, Silurian Devonian period, uh, principally. And uh, they are they were studied around the world, and uh, the stratigraphic correlation of the different of the same specimen found all over the world was realized, and so uh, they are valuable. Uh, existed existed valuable the stratigraphic market uh, for uh, for uh, for age identification. Where for the age identification when you when you are studying a uh, well. Uh, here there is an example of uh, fungo kitina disease treatment of fungo kitina cosovensis. And for example, fungo kitina cosovensis is a particular species that is uh, characterized because they yield like fields all over the their surface, well, all over the surface of the chamber. And uh, <clears throat> this particular species is, uh, is characteristic and is an index fossil for the lower part of the pyridolic. So um, if you find uh, this, uh, this species when you are studying uh, sedimentary rock, you can locate your sedimentary rock inside the Pridoli. Uh, so in the upper Silurian, uh, in the upper Siluria inside the stratigraphic range, inside the stratigraphic time scale. And here we can see uh, other example and uh, some example uh, of uh, one, uh, of how you can see Kitino uh, in, in a transmitter light microscope or biological microscope. And Kitino uh, is uh, generally, when, when it's studied, Kitino generally is always studied with uh, electron, when, with SIM, electron, uh, with uh, scanning electron microscope. Why? Because Kitino you can see in this picture that they are very are brown, dark brown. They, 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 they vesicle, they, they struct, they, 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 they comp the composition of their vesicle is, is very dark. So the, the, the light cannot pass uh, easily through the particle and you cannot see uh, within a, a biological microscope or a transmitter light microscope very well all the ornamentation 
uh, that yield the particle that are that are that uh, all the ornamentation are extremely are extremely important for the identification of CP nodes. So generally, when you, when you want to study CP nodes, this is a uh, where well, it's complicated because yield time, but uh, you need to to realize the investigation with the, the with scanning electron microscope is, is and uh, you can see all the very well all the the ornamentation characteristics. And after that, you can identify the, the, the specimen. And we can see, I found for you these, uh, these examples from Estonia. We are in the Silurian period, uh, well, in the Silurian age. And, uh, and uh, we can see, for example, uh, this, uh, this specimen, Angocitina elongata, and Pyrocitina dismea, and Aspirocitina intia. Uh, well, uh, let's, uh, well, we finish it now with the with the characteristic and the classification of Pinodron. And then let's start with with the, the most useful uh, group that uh, is dinoflagellite. Dinoflagellite uh, are extremely important. Uh, well, appears in the Triassic, uh, and uh, the the stratigraphic range uh, is from the Triassic to to recent. Uh, they appear in the Jurassic and uh, have uh, different peaks of evolution uh, located in the middle of Jurassic, in the upper Cretaceous, and in the Paleozoic. And what are dinoflagellites? Dinoflagellites, uh, well, dinoflagellites are very important uh, for in, the, in the application of, uh, of palynology in, in the petroleum industry because dinoflagellites are very well studied around the world and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, of course uh, generally uh, well the Jurassic in in uh, all over sediments from marine rocks to lacustrine rocks so they are found in a, in a wide stratigraphic range of sedimentary environments. They are a karyotic unicellular organism uh, of, uh, that belongs from the genome Dinophyceae, and uh, they can be well, they can be autotrophic, so photosynthetic. They 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 realize the cytoplanktonic cycle of life, and uh, or they could be heterotrophic, so they can be saprophytic or symbiotic, or they can be the predators of other kind of microorganisms that live in the sea. They are found in different kinds of, of environments, as uh, I told you before, uh, from open marine uh, environments, uh, estuaries, uh, and uh, also in lakes, rivers, and lagoons. And uh, the occurrence uh, of dinoflagellites uh, depends uh, mainly from the latitude from the salinity and the chemical condition and temperature condition of, of the water where they lie. And, uh, and, uh, appears, uh, from, and uh, appears uh, since the Jurassic, uh, and well, the, the stratigraphic range is uh, since the Jurassic to the rest. Uh, uh, Dinoflagellite, uh, as a mobility, uh, the mobility is, uh, is conferred by two flagella. One flagella is located, uh, uh, well, no, is transversal to the sheath of, of the specimen of this kind of palinomorph, and the other flagella is located transversal, uh, uh, is located long longitudinal, and uh, and uh, for example, they they can swim uh, different. Uh, well, they can swim inside the stratigraphic column. Generally, they move uh, vertically uh, in the water because uh, they they search uh, the the best condition uh, for for the for their living. They they are they are searching the be the best uh, light condition and nutrient condition, and uh, so they can reach a certain depth inside the, the inside the, the the water depth. And uh, stay and stay there for several days. And uh, uh, other particularity of uh, dinoflagellites and is that they can be they can be bioluminescent, 
the bioluminescence sense is conferred by an enzyme that uh, the, that is called the luciferase, or they 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 can be very harmful. For example, they they can they can create the uh, the algam the harmful algam blooms called the red tides that are very harmful and that they can alter or the, the ecosystem inside the inside the system inside the inside the environment where they are like. And so uh, okay we see that the dinoflagellites are uh, eukaryotic uh, well no are uh, eukaryotic uh, uh, are eukaryotic unicell organisms and uh, in this picture we can see uh, the 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 city the the the, the cycle of life of the life of dinoflagellite and then we can see well we can start from here from the number from the one these are uh, dinoflagellite that uh, start that, uh, the, that they reproduce principally by mitosis and meiosis after the reproduction they they create a theta we are going to see later the, the creation of the theca. They create a theca and uh, they, they live in the sea. They, they stay in, a, well, they, they, live, they live in the sea uh, normally. And uh, in, a, in a certain time when the condition of the temperature or salinity or nutrients inside the water or inside the sea or inside the environment where they are living, change and the, the dinoflagellate cannot find uh, very good conditions for their sustenance, they create a resisting cyst. And uh, these resisting cysts follow, start to follow to the floor of the sea and follow on the bottom of the sea, deposited on the, on the bottom of the sea, on the when well, on the sea floor surface, and when they, they when they deposite it, these resisting seas has had the, the ability to fossilize. Later, when the condition of temperature and nutrients and salinity and other times uh, will will be uh, another time valuable for the for for the life of the dinoflagellite, they uh, exist. So uh, they, they they exist from the resisting cyst they that create originally the resisting cyst fossilized inside the sediment and uh, is what we found uh, during paleontological analysis and the the cell get out the the resisting cyst and start again his uh, his 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 uh, life his his uh, his cycle of life. So uh, this is to explain to you that uh, when we study dinoflagellite cysts, we are studying the resisting cysts they, that they create when the condition of nutrients uh, of the environment where they are living cannot uh, allow their uh, a good uh, system for, for, the, for their seeking life. Uh, as I told you before, during their life, they create a theca. This theca, uh, when it's created in a particular time of their life, and uh, the theca, when well, no, the theca is is, uh, is characterized, is created, but by several plates. These several plates overlap, uh, overlap each each other uh, to permit the growing of the organism, and. Uh, the teca, um, well, as I, as I told you before, uh, the te well, no, they, they create a teca and later they, they create a cyst. So the, the structural elements that characterize a teca uh, are, are, called, are, for example, are the plate, the, the marginal, that are the marginal, uh, the marginal outline of each plate are called suture. The central part of the cyst is considered singular, and, uh, the, uh, and generally the cyst in the central part of the body yield, uh, uh, yield a depressed structure called sulcus. 
and uh, ask, well, this is the theta that uh, the, the, the dinoflagellates create. And uh, when, the, when, of course, the encystment, so when they, they create the cyst, we, uh, the cyst can, can reflect or not the, the, the theta structure. And uh, if the, the cyst reflects the structure of the theta, the different elements that characterize the cyst are, uh, have the, the prefix para, and so uh, we are talking about paraplate, parasator, parasingulum, and parasul. But uh, in few slides, we are going to see this concept. Here, where this is uh, in this slide, we can see uh, represented the dinoflagellate cyst and uh, the different uh, terminology uh, they use it for describe uh, the different elements of the, the of the cyst. Uh, general, uh, generalizing the, all, all the clots, all the concepts, this is uh, the theca. The upper part of the theca is called epitheca, and the lower part of the theca is called hypotheca. Uh, we can see uh, that the uh, dinoflagellate can yield horn, so the horn, horn can be apical or uh, antapical orts, we can find apical orts or antapical orts in the dinoflagellate teeth. And theca are characterized by plates, and the, the marginal outlines are called tutus. And the singulum is the term, is the term used for describing the, the central part of the, of the dinoflagellate teeth, and the, is the part where the, the the transversal flagellum is located uh, during the during the, the during the life of the of the dinoflagellite, and also the the plate has a terminology. Uh, we can we the, the plate of the, the plate located on the surface of of an dinoflagellite can be preapical, apical. If they are located in the apical part, they can be intercalary if they are between the presingular plate and the apical plate. Dinoflagellite uh, uh, can have a presingular plate, singular plate, post singular plate. If they are if they are before the singulus or after or 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 or, or below the singulus. Or uh, they can have uh, they can they can have uh, antapical plates because they are located in the, top, in, the top, in the antapical part of the body. And uh, the the dinoflagellate uh, can yield different organization like epithelodons and like uh, acrytar uh, on their surface. And uh, these are the principal ornamentations that uh, that that yield the that yields the different uh, dinoflagellates, and on the right of this slide, we can see the different uh, the different outline shapes that characterize the the, the different group of dinoflagellates, and uh, we can see that, for example, that uh, that the dinoflagellates can yield processes, can yield septa that uh, generally are located in the sutures on the plate. They can have granules located on the surface. Of the particles and the, this, this kind of part, this kind of ornamentation can be can be inside the, the plate, or can be uh, well, intratabula is, is is located inside the plate of uh, of the dinoflagellite of the well, of the of the surface of the dinoflagellite, or is located or can cannot or can be uh, uh, not intratabular if it's not located only inside the, a plate of a dinoflagellite can yield fine and the, this like granules this kind of spines can be in the sutures can be located in the sutures like septa or this kind of spines like could be like granules that are located all over the surface of the sea and in the in this, in this part we can see the the principal uh, the principal uh, outline of the different pieces that uh, are found when you are studying dinoflagellites that characterize the, the different groups. For example, here we can see uh, a serotioid 
morphological uh, structure, uh, 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 and for example, we can see uh, a more surrounded uh, morphological, uh, well, a more surrounded outline that uh, characterizes uh, the, the morphology of you know, flagellae. And uh, as I told you before, um, the, the dinoflagellite creates a theca, and uh, after that creates a cyst, and the cyst can uh, reflect or not the tabulation, the original tabulation of the theca. And uh, uh, the study of the, tab the, of the tabulation of dinoflagellite is extremely important for the, for, for the, for the for their taxonomic identification, so for the taxon for the for the identification of species and genera, and uh, here we can see this great picture that, for example, illustrate us that, for example, this kind of of dinoflagellite that yield the process uh, in this case the process reflects the original tabulation of the data. So. Um, so the different uh, uh, location of the different process can tell us where are, where was located, for example, the apical plate that was the red one, the pre-singular plate that was the yellow one, the singular plate that was the brown one, the post-singular plate that was the green one, the antapical plate that was the orange one, and was and where was located also the sulcus, so the central part of the piece. In this case, the, the, the white process. And uh, so we can see that for, that for the identification, for the taxonomic identification of dinoflagellite, uh, the, the study of the archaeopil, of the shape of the shape of, of the of the chamber and the, the, uh, and the ornamentation uh, are the, the principal characteristics as they use it and uh, well, no, are the principal characteristics of pervert and studied for the taxonomic of the identification of dinoflagellite. And uh, as I told you before, uh, the dinoflagellite you know, uh, after the excitement, well, after the, the, the position on the sea floor surface, they, they exist from the, from the, from the heat they that created, and they exist from, uh, from, uh, from uh, an, from an apertus that is found in the cyst, in the in the dinoflagellite cyst when when you are observing uh, when you are when you are observing it through through a microscope, and uh, this uh, this aperture is called archaeopil, and uh, is is created by a plate a plate this. The plate that come off is called operculum, and the cavity is uh, called archaeopil. And uh, uh, when you are studying, you know, flagellite, the geometry of the archaeom of the archaeopil and the the location of the archaeopil that could be apical or intercalary or pre singular archaeopil is uh, is uh, is an important is extremely is an is an extremely important characteristic. In the taxonomic identification of the cyst when you are studying the dinoflagellite. Uh, here we can see some examples <coughs> of uh, dinoflagellite that was found uh, uh, in, uh, in your continent. Uh, this, uh, this was from uh, this dinoflagellite was, was from uh, uh, Angola. And for example, if, if we see in this specimen, in the, the third one, this is a specimen that. Well, they classify the like nesidinium, general nesidinium. The general nesidinium is characterized to yield a pre-singular archaeopil. And I don't know, but here you can see that there is an aperture of the teeth. We can see the singulum, that is the, as I told you before, the structure that identify the central part of the body. And in this Case in this picture, we can see perfectly the singulum, we can see perfectly the antapical plate, and we can see perfectly the well, the, well, the post singular plate and the and the pre singular plate. And in this case, we can see that there is a cavity located in the pre singular plate, 
in this cavity, as I told you before, is an archaeopil. In this case, the archaeopil is located presingularly. Is, is an, is, you can see that it's located in a presingular plate. And uh, for example, for uh, in Ezidinium is a genera that is characterized for the that is characterized by uh, a presingular uh, archaeopil. So as I told you before, the, the, the position and the, the location and the, the geometry of the archaeometry of the archaeopil is useful for, uh, for identification of genera and species. So uh, for example, in this species, we can see the archaeopil and uh, uh, in the, the general Nesidinium yields a pre-singular archaeopil. So as I told you before, this is a great example to understand how was studied the dinoflagellite. You know, or for example, this is another species, this is a Peludinium bacteri, and this is another genera that is characterized by a central cavity and uh, to, to, well, two or not. By, by excavation located in the apical part in the apical part of the body. Omotribium is another genera that is characterized to yield uh, uh, intratabular processes. <clears throat> so processes like, like this, that, are, that each process is, is located in, inside uh, a plate. So each process identifies the plate, and in this case, uh, uh, it, it was identified that the like by floriplates because the, the processes uh, resemble uh, are uh, resemble well the processes are characterized by different by by singular by by singular cellular tube and this is a characteristic that identify this type of species. So as I told you before, the, the, the study of the morphological structure is very important for the, for the taxonomic identification. So if you want to give a, a correct name of the species that you are studying, uh, I hope you, you get the concept. And uh, here there is another example, uh, also from your continent. It was from, uh, from Nigeria. We are in the tertiary. And we can see that uh, for example, there are dinoflagellites that are characterized from by two, two horns, from, by two, two antapical horns, one, one apical horn and one apical horn, like, like the genera that are from, for example, this, this kind of species, Palestinos gold prosguenses, or, or another general that yields generally apical horn and one apical horn and antapical horn are effectista. Cerodinium is another genera that is characterized, for example, by one antapical or and two antapical or. And this is another interesting species because, because for example, this genera this is, uh, is characterized by the presence of uh, a bigger antapical or. We can see this and uh, an apical archaeopil. So we can see in the low, in the apical, in the antapical part of the species a bigger antapical process that characterizes this genera within uh, an apical uh, aperture. And we can see here in the apical part of the body, there is an aperture, there is an lack of processes. And this is a particular species, very common in the paleogen, this is collegium. And is another great example to, to, to explain you how we study the, the well, no, principally uh, how we study the, the the taxonomy of, of dinoflagellates. And here I put uh, you another example. I take uh, this picture. I agree. Uh, well, no, I like this picture because you can see, uh, you know, in a transmitted, you know, in a scanning electron microscope picture, uh, specimen is a uh, is a dinoperidium cladoide. Uh, I take this picture from this paper, and we can see that. This author was able to reconstruct the tabulation of the different plate of the different plates that characterize this kind of species. And as we can see, <coughs> he was able, for example, to identify the the post singular plate, the pre singular plate, and the different plates. Also, from the from the apical point of view, uh, from the antarctical point of view. The different plates that that characterize the, the, the species. 
toys I told you before, <coughs> uh, you know, flagellates are very important for your stratigraphic study because because they 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 they, they was very well studied uh, uh, from all sediments all over the world, and uh, this kind of study is very common in, in a paleontological paper. So when you are studying you know, flagellites, uh, you, you could be able to identify the different plates and uh, be able to accord a taxonomic identification. Uh, let's start with the fourth group that we are going to see. Uh, the fourth group is another group, a uh, very particular group that is called colecodonts. Colecodonts are Cicino's map, part of marine uh, poly well, of marine uh, worms, extinct worms. Uh, they, their geological record is from uh, the earlier Provincian to the recent, and uh, they are very useful geostratigraphically, generally in the Paleozoic and, uh, well, no, in the Paleozoic, principally in the Ordovician and in the, in the Permian age. And uh, are used, for example, in uh, thermal maturity studies because, uh, uh, such as Kitinozoans, uh, they, they always are found uh, such uh, brown and very dark brown parts. And uh, like Kitinozoans, they are bigger, uh, such as uh, they, are, they are bigger from other kinds of. Uh, Phranenomorphs, they, they can reach from 100 to 200 uh, microns and can, can have uh, variable morphology. And uh, colecodons are very poorly studied because, because they have uh, a very confusing taxonomy and uh, uh, they have a very slow evolution. So, um, they, these two characteristics. Uh, these two characteristics uh, yield uh, a very, uh, well, no, these two characteristics conferred the, the, conferred the, the, the complicacy to, to study scolecodons. And uh, what are scolecodons? Just, <laughs> just to understand, we, we can see this picture. And in this picture, we can see that uh, generally scolecodons derive uh, from the from from very complex jaw apparatus that have different structures and shape of uh, extinct of extinct of extinct uh, serpilutids like uh, this uh, this worm we can see the the mouth of this worm that is characterized by different uh, jaws and uh, these jaws are found uh, you can see this picture. Uh, and uh, that can that represent and the the, the 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 apparatus is characterized uh, principally of three group of elements the maxillae the mandibles and the posterior cardia and uh, for this reason the study of colecodons is very complex and uh, the, uh, the i put here this this picture so you can understand that, that the different genera of, of, of colecodons are marked, uh, are, uh, are characterized by different systems of, uh, of jaw apparatus. So you can see that the, the, the different jaw apparatus are very complex. And uh, we can see, for example, that, uh, that, uh, that the different genera can yield uh, different numbers of elements also. And if you want to, to, to consider or imagine uh, to uh, uh, an actual uh, represent, uh, an actual representative of uh, what uh, can be a, uh, a serpilus that can create a jaw of colecodons, this is an actual uh, representative. This is a unique aphrodisoid. I put this picture because uh, you can see, for example, that this kind of organism yields to mandibles, to very mandibles that, uh, that are very similar and resemble the, the, the same morphology and shape of, of polecodon. And here we can see some example. Uh, 
like it did not don't were were when are studied are studied with the use of scanning electron microscope. <clears throat> now we are going to see the uh, the fourth group that are uh, the well we finished with the classification of marine palinomorphs. Uh, we can start with the general classification and the general characteristics of uh, another group of palinomorphs that are spores and pollen. And uh, what are foreign pollen? Well, both foreign pollen are produced during the life of the cycle uh, of the plant. Generally, the pollen strains are produced by angiosperms and gymnosperms. Angiosperms are they are that are, are, are the terrestrial representatives that create principal flowers. Gymnosperms are the terrestrial representatives that cannot produce flowers and produce spines. And then we have other uh, and the Spores, in, uh, in other ways, spores are produced mainly by plants and bryophytes. Uh, spore and pollen generally are produced in large numbers. So uh, they are produced in lar large number and they can travel, uh, <clears throat> can travel by wind and water very long distances. And uh, they are found in, uh, in a very wide range of the positional environment. And for example, angiosperm grains, we can find we can find angiosperm grains in very deep water marine environment because because angiosperm grains has the characteristic to travel with wind, so as the characteristic to, to, to travel very wide distance. Uh, when you want to classify a forest, uh, well, the name and the classification of, of fossil forest and pollen follows the rules of the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. And uh, generally, uh, the, class the classification of the spores and pollen is based on, on the, of the nature and the termination of the spore of the, or, or pollen. So uh, opening outline and the world structure and the group and the culture of the outdoor world of foreign pollen are studied for the taxonomic identification. Um, the, the, well, here we can see a very simplified scheme from, for, uh, that uh, generalizes the, the morphology and, uh, of, of, of spores and pollen. Uh, generally, the, the morphology uh, can be described according to their shape, to the apertures or uh, called um, We can find the spherical, uh, spherical part, spherical pollen grains, two triangular uh, four grains, and uh, and we can find the more complex structures like angiosperm sphere grains, like like uh, for example the the pollen that belongs from the from the pinus or from the angiosperm yield this particular structure. Here we can see a photo that, that is characterized by, by three circular elements. No? And uh, um, <clears throat> the, the spores and pollen can, uh, can yield four or apertures that can be located uh, in the equatoral in the, in the in the equatorial outline of the structure, or they can be distributed uh, along or uh, all over the the particles. So uh, if the if if, if the um, if, if the apertures or the pores are located all over the particles, uh, we we can call that kind of characteristic uh, Stefano corporated or in are found only in one part of the particle, we can consider that, that, that part that the spore pollen uh, with one cold, so monocold part. And <clears throat> like titinozoans and like dinoflagellite, uh, spore and pollen can, uh, can, can have different uh, ornamentation. Uh, the ornamentation uh, are, 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 are expression, mainly of the kind. Well, uh, the, 
bueno, in this picture we can see the, the general, bueno, the generalized description of the wall of a pollen grain. Uh, the pollen grain is characterized by an outer wall that is called extine, and uh, an inner wall that is called intine. And uh, inside the, these two walls, we can find the, the cells that characterize the spore, uh, that characterize the pollen. Uh, the spore, uh, in other way, uh, doesn't have an extine or intine. Uh, as two layer, uh, the, the outer layer is called extra, extra spore, and the inner layer called it endospore and uh, and uh, like pond lens uh, these two layers can yield a different and more different morphological characteristics if you want to know more for uh, for of, of the morphology and the and the surface structures that the, that can yield spores and pollen I put here a link of a YouTube video uh, that, in my opinion, is very, very, very well done. It's realized by Florida Tech, the University of Florida, and there are two videos, and I suggest you that you can see so you can understand the better and uh, with very great example all the all the morphology, all the morphological characteristics, uh, all the morphological characteristics of pollen and spore. Here we can see a, a very a very generalized scheme of the surface ornamentation that can yield a spore or a pollen grain with some example. For example, uh, here we can see a monocolpate packet grain. We can see that yields only a colpi and it's stilated, so they they it doesn't give a, well, this particle doesn't have uh, uh, a sensation ornamentation. Uh, pollen grain can be created like this, like uh, this, this one. This is a striato colporite. Can uh, yield spines, so can can be echinated or can be reticulated <coughs> or can be reticulated. This is another example from of uh, pollen grain and of of a um, of, uh, uh, spore grain. And uh, for example, we can see the three call piece, one, two, three, and, and, and this kind of particle is yield a, a reticulation on, on, the, on this page. And here we can see some example of theatrical polites. Well, we can see some example of an electron microscope photography. And uh, here, another example from your company, from your continent. <laughs> now, yes, we are in Sudan. And uh, this, this is a very great work. And uh, in my opinion, a very interesting reference where you can find the uh, palynological reference from uh, your country and uh, from Sudan. And also, uh, if I don't mind, in this paper, are, are, uh, there are also some beyond zones that you can you can use for your palynological investigation. And uh, generally, the sports, uh, the form of the, when when you study sports, sports uh, can uh, represent well. The, what are sports? Sports, as I told you before, belongs mainly from uh, the ferns and the bryophytes, so the the lower part of the of the plant. And uh, the spore morphology can uh, represent uh, the nature of, uh, of the, the meiotic division during the division of the spore of the spore mother cell. And for example, uh, when you are observing spore, you can observe inside the, 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 the central body of the spore a mark that, is, that has a trilateral shape. And uh, this mark uh, is a mark that belongs because, because uh, when uh, originally the spores were produced, they, they, the, the, the spores were produced uh, as a tetrad. So like one, two, three, four spores. And when they divided and were, were dispersed through time, uh, they, they, they mark uh, this kind of liazur inside the central mark. So uh, generally, when you observe 
sports, you, you can observe sports with related marks inside the, the central part of the body or only with one large, with one, one larger that is located in the central part of the body. These are all the, uh, these are other two examples, one from Sudan and the other one from the Egypt. <clears throat> and uh, the general application uh, of foreign pollen uh, when, when you are studying uh, is, is that they are important because they provide a continuous record of the evolution and the evolution, evolutionary history of vascular plants. The, as I told you in the, in the fourth classroom, uh, they are very sensitive to the climate variation. Uh, you can find, uh, you, can, you can think a very simple example uh, during summer, during the, 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 all the, well, during summer, the, the trees are green uh, and they, they are flowering and they are flowering, they are producing pollen, and during winter, uh, they, they, they lost all their leaves they, and they, they stop their reproductional processes. So uh, they, they, they mark, uh, uh, well, they, they, the plants are sensitive to, to a very, to a very, sh to, to climate variations. During, during, during summer, they produce foreign pollen. During winter, they not produce, uh, they not produce foreign pollen. So if you, so they reflect uh, the, the climate variation. And so, uh, can reflect a, a paleo environment, a, a climate stage of the position of the past. And, uh, and also the, the, the study of spore, uh, of spore and pollen grains can help to understand the provenance of, of sediment. Uh, as I told you before, uh, not the accuracy of how, well, the accuracy of determination of paleo environment of, of, with pollen grains is not very easy because because the uh, uh, angiosperm sperm of pollen grains, the, the, for example, as, as is represented in this picture, can travel very long distances, and they can be found uh, from the neritic environment to deep water environment. For uh, generally, uh, or in ter very terrestrial environment, for generally cannot travel. Uh, very long distances. They are found uh, generally in terrestrial environment and neritic environment. And in the next lesson and the last lesson, we are going to see that uh, uh, dinoflagellites uh, are different from foreign pollen because the fish models and the fish studies that uh, the different genera of dinoflagellites can represent different environments. But don't worry, we are going to see the, the model of process 2005 in the, in the last classroom. So you, you can understand how the, the different genera of dinoflagellites are used in, for, the, for the determination of paleo environment, of the paleo environment in, a, in petroleum studies. Well, in the, in the study of palynology, in the application of the palynology inside the petroleum industry. And the, the, the last group that we are going to see uh, is uh, our fungal spores um, and fungi uh, like bryophytes and ferns and, uh, and vascular plants uh, doesn't contain photosynthetic uh, pigments. They are principally heterotrophic, heterotrophic organisms and uh, they produce uh, principally, well, they produce mainly spores. And spores, uh, like spores produced by land plants, uh, can uh, fossilize and are found uh, in, the, in, the, in, uh, in sediments uh, all, all, throughout all over the world. Uh, they are very, well, they, 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 they appear in the Paleozoic, but uh, are not very frequent in the Paleozoic, are more frequent in the Mesozoic, uh, in the Mesozoic uh, are less ornamented, and uh, throughout the tertiary, uh, 
they, ev they evolve uh, like angiosperm and very quickly and uh, very rapidly. And, uh, and uh, like spores and pollen, uh, fungal spores are very useful for determination of the paleoenvironment because fungal spores derived from fungi and fungi for, like, like terrestrial plants live it only in terrestrial environment. So they, they are indicating principally a, a, a terrestrial full of, of, of sediment. And uh, such as foreign pollen, they can reflect a uh, perturba perturbation of the climate or, or, or biological uh, perturbation on the land. Um, uh, like sports and pollen, uh, the, the, bueno, I don't know if, bueno, these are uh, pictures of different kinds of, of fungi. Uh, fungi can, uh, can grow on the floor of, on the ground or, or, or well, on the ground or can, can be parasitic, they can, they, can be, they can grow attached to uh, another organism. And then uh, fungal spores, uh, when you want to, to give a name to, to a fungal spore, uh, the, the, the nomenclature of fungi, uh, such as spore and pollen, follow the roots of the international code of the botanical nomenclature. And uh, uh, exist uh, biozonation uh, realized that with fungal spores, that uh, with spores with limited stratigraphic time rate. So this characteristic yield to, to the fungal spores uh, to be used for not only for environmental conditions, but, uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, also for age determination of sediment. And, uh, uh, Fungal spores are very are very particular because they have uh, a very high range variability of morphology, and uh, they can uh, differ from a single cellet uh, from single cellet from a single cellet grain to a multi cellet grain to more complex uh, structures. And uh, here I put here some fossil uh, fungal spores from. Well, no, these are these are multicellular grains from uh, from China. These are from the Neogen, and uh, we, here we are in the tertiary. And uh, like fungalify, they they can create a very elongated multicellular multicellular structure, or they can create this kind of uh, this kind of particular tetrapod uh, structure, or they can be found uh, like this kind of structures. These kind of structures are considered fu uh, fungal fructification. And uh, as you can see, the uh, taxonomy and uh, the a taxonomic classification of the different fructification and of, of the different multicellular uh, structures that they can uh, characterize the fungal spores. And uh, these are an example that this fungal fructification are from Brazil, we are in the Neocene. And uh, as we can see, well, they, they are studied and uh, they, they found uh, the stratigraphical application, uh, why not also in, uh, in, in, uh, in the application of palynology uh, during the, the exploration of hydrocarbon. And uh, with this slide, I finished <laughs> this, this long lesson, sorry. And uh, here there is uh, all the reference that I use for the creation of this lesson. And thank you. I hope that all the concepts uh, were captured and you understand uh, you understand this classroom. And uh, well, now if you have uh, some question, I'm here to, to answer and clear uh, any doubts you can ask. Thank you.